This morning we begin with an excerpt from Wisdom from Science of Eternity. Chakra, the Psycho Spiritual Centers and Life. Chakra, the Psycho Spiritual Centers and Life. An excerpt from Wisdom from Science of Eternity. Most people are born through sex and die from the lowest chakra, the sex entity. There are seven psycho-spiritual centers or chakras in the body from where life can go out of the body. The last is on top of the head and unless you are in light, Life cannot go out of that chakra. These centers are not found in the physical body. Although their, their reflection or shadow is there in the physical body, but they belong to the third body. As you move more and more into the present, inside, you will come across seven lights or centers of lights. According to Hindu yoga, there are seven chakras. Buddhists call these phenomena as seven lights or seven lamps. In one of the compositions, Veera has called, referred to these as seven steps. If we consider the life of an individual, the spiritual life of an individual as a life, then these chakras or psycho-spiritual centers are seven steps. Just as when you want to look outside something that is going on, first is the level or the plane of activity, where the activities are taking place. If a demonstration, a show or something is happening on the street, there are people gathered, you will not be able to get a clear view inside the circle what is going on. And more so if you are short in height, there may be people taller than you. So you have to climb up of their height or if you are a child you have to go in the lap of someone so that your height is elevated and from there you can get a clear view of what is going on. As you increase your height or teaching from where you are standing you will be able to get better and better view. So sometimes you climb up on a higher step. If you want to see something, a view of the ocean or a view of something, of the street, from the street level you will not be able, your vision will be short. You cannot see far beyond. But as you go on the elevation or on a higher altitude of a building, higher plane of a building, your vision gets magnified. You can see far and wide. If you climb up on the leaning tower of Isa, you will be able to get a clear view of all around. If you look at the plains from the mountain top, you will be able to get a different view. This is what Meera explained in one of the compositions about Krishna that, Oh my beloved, what have you done to me that I cannot forget you? She is not talking about remembering. All the yoga, all the mantra and all the systems they speak on remembering. That's why mantra chanting is done to remember God. 
And yet still while these mantras are chanted, something else goes on like undercurrent. But when Mina says that I cannot forget you, it is a totally a different issue. You look at a pregnant woman, she does not remember like the Hare Krishna and other devotees chanting all the time the name of the, uh, name of the Lord. But the remembrance does not come. Look at the pregnant woman, she does not have to remember or chant that happened pregnant continuously. But her, there is a deep understanding in her that I am pregnant and her every action is guided by that understanding that I am pregnant. She bends, she does everything with that understanding. Ram Krishna says a devotee is like a pregnant woman who is in constant remembrance effortlessly that I am carrying that spark of divine bliss within me. So when you look at these, look at the image of your beloved from different angles, you see a different view. So Meera says in that condition, in that opposition, who oh my beloved, I have tried to look at you, to try to envision you from different planes of consciousness. These are lights, as Buddhists call it. These are planes of consciousness, planes of awareness from where you can get a different view of the circumstances and situations and life daily. And not only that, it is it becomes the plane of your operation also. Some people operate from that plane of understanding. Like you look at a primary school teacher, although he may have obtained a degree and he is capable of teaching in the college as well, but when he teaches in the primary school, depending on the students, his level of explanation is for the sake of those students who are at the primary level. They cannot understand beyond that level. Then there is the college level when he comes or uh, he is promoted to the college level, then his mode of expression differs. So later on these planes, the cycle centers becomes plane of operation. So Mira says that it is he, in her expression, in her composition, these are mentioned as the ladders, the steps of different ladders. And when you reach the top of the ladder, you can get a much clearer view, which is like a mountain top. So when you are looking at the world, the phenomena, your circumstances, situations, your problems from the level, from the plane of Bhulaga, the first center, the earth center, which is the ground level, the level where you are standing you will not be able to get that clear view. But when you climb the higher runs of the ladder, you will get a different view. And then when you reach the top of the ladder, the highest plane, the highest height, then you will be able to get a clear view. A saint, a master, operates from that point. So he gets a clear view beyond time and space. Just as when you go in your city on the mountain side, you are getting a clearer view of the plains far and wide. Buddhists call these phenomena as seven lights or seven lamps. As you become more and more detached from the body and positions, and you are not interested in desires, your energy starts moving upwards. The same energy that is contained at the lowest center, the sex center or the earth center begins to move upwards. Indian music is more concerned with the, the sahasra which is a thousand petal center or the head center. 
Western music on the other hand is more concerned with the sexual center, muladhar or the base center, where Western music empowers you, you feel more sexually aroused. On the other hand, when Indian music empowers you, you will feel spiritually aroused. The process of animation begins. The stringed instruments are considered as stringed instrument. instruments are considered to resonate with the higher planes, the planes above the heart center. Heart center, that is the fourth center, then the throat center, which is the fifth center, center of expression. The center of demand, the center of command, which is the sixth center or the third eye center, and beyond that is the center of the highest spiritual elevation, that is the thousand pattern center. So, the string instruments go from fourth center and upwards. All the drum instruments, they go from the center below the fourth center, that is the third center, fire center, the fire center, the water center, and the earth center, the muladhara, the swadishna, and agni center. So when the drum instruments are played, it activates your lower centers and people begin to dance in that way. And when the higher centers are activated, you are just sitting down, you are swaying your upper body, whereas when the, the drum instruments are played, your lower body swings. So in the, the actual musical uh, repertoire, is a combination of a string instrument, the wind instrument, the wind instrument, the, it activates the heart center. So wind instruments, this is why Krishna center, Krishna plays the flute and that when the air is blown, because when you are blowing the air, it is not your lower center smoking, it is your heart, the lungs are filled with the air. When you are breathing in, your lungs are filled first with the air and then it goes down to the other centers. So, the a musical repertoire is a combination of the string instrument, the wind instrument and the drum instrument. So, it actually moves on all the centers of the body. This is why music has been considered as a great therapy. When the whether you look at it, the instru the instruments like piano, accordion, piano, the harmonium, these are wind instruments. Flute is a wind instrument, and those two operate at a different principle. The in flute you have to bring your power line or the life force into the flute and the music is created there. In, in case of piano and harmonium, the wind it is op it operates on the wind is wind principle, but the wind or the air comes from the outer atmosphere through a different process. So the sound difference. Music is therefore considered a very subtle meditation. The seven notes of music are concerned with seven chakras or the psycho-spiritual centers of the body and each chakra has its own note. If you can concentrate on these psycho-centers or chakras, you will start hearing that note arising within your body. The second chakra has two notes. The third has three. One is important and the other two are just part of it. 
but create a harmony. It goes on becoming a greater harmony, arising higher than each chakra. On the seventh chakra, it is an orchestra. You are simply a musical harmony, a blend, a rhythm. Each chakra has its own form, its own music, its own taste, and its own smell. The deeper you move inside yourself, the more you find the whole world. Because if it is not within you, you cannot see it without either. Something has to be within you only then you can experience. Something has to be within you, only then you will find the reflections outside. Something is always needed to correspond. If you do not have experience of something within, you will not be able to identify even when you are tasting something. You always try to resemble it with the taste that you have already known. This always goes on. If something new tastes, you will always try to find a pattern within you that you have experienced, out of your own experience. All this so-called ascetic knowledge about chakras, energy, kundalini and astral bodies is dangerous as knowledge, the outer knowledge. But when it becomes part of your awareness, then it is of great use. As experience, it is a totally different thing. You may acquire the knowledge about different tastes, different foods, but the experience will be totally different. If it is needed for your spiritual growth, it will come to you in the right time. And then it will be an experience, not knowledge. And if you have an acquired knowledge, borrowed knowledge, it is going to be an influence. When I am talking about these, you have read Lee Peter's book on chapters and you will be, as I am speaking, you, you will be looking into the pages of that book that you have once read. And you will always be saying that Tausha Buddha is saying this, but Lee Peter said this. Remember, I am speaking to you, to a different set of people whose awareness had grown to a, to a certain height to a certain and it has brought a certain level of understanding. But then someone who is not within the energy field of the master will find it difficult to understand. For example, Hindu yoga believes in seven chakras. Jain scriptures mention nine chakras. And Buddhist scripture says that there are dozens of chakras. There are, these are only the important ones which have been chosen by different schools. They do not give any fixed number. And this differ from student to a student or person to person. Acquired knowledge will always be confusing and you will not know how many chakras are there. It is not that you go into your body or you take the anatomy of your body, anatomical picture that you locate these chakras. These chakras comes at according to your awareness. And what are you going to do with that knowledge? Whether they are seven or nine or dozens, your knowledge is not going to help. Instead it is it can only hinder the process of development. Energy fields, chakras, and all aesthetic things 
are for experience and not for knowledge. Therefore, keep in mind, keep your mind clear of all knowledge so that you do not expect it. And when the experience happens, you are ready to accept it. It happens exactly that. There are seven chapters, but they might not exist in the same places for all. And there are experiences, but they never happen in the same way to two different persons. You are tasting a dish, two or three different people taste, their experiences will be different. In the East, we use a dish called Varmasi that is a very fine, if you ask a Westerner, he may say these look like a very fine rice noodle type because it is very fine, the shape is like that noodles, but noodles are thick and when they are cooked in the milk as a sweet dish, if you ask Lars, you may say that these are look like a very fine pasta. Instead of cooking in cheese, it has been cooked in milk as a sweet dish. Because his experience is totally different. This dish is of the East, but it is made out of the all-purpose flour. Even the noodles are of a different thickness. Then there is Hong Kong noodles, there is rice noodles, which are thinner than the other. And pastas is also made out of the all-purpose flour but of a different shape and different thicknesses. Barbasli is very fine. It's a little thread-like and then it is cooked in the milk to create the dish which Muslims use, Hindus use and then for that matter the other people also use. Your experience is same, but to express that experience will be the expression of that experience will be different. And there are experiences but they never happen in the same way for two persons. In reality they happen very differently. So there is no need to know the physiology of the Kundalini. There is no need to know the chakras. Also, there is no need to know what happens finally. Because if you know, it will, you will start hypnotizing yourself. And by and by, you will start getting into the rituals. The, when experience comes, it is out of, you are experiencing a dish. It is of the outcome. It is the outcome of the action that you are taking. You have that particular dish in a bowl in front of you. Slowly and slowly it goes into your mouth and through the process of digestion it passes through the esophagus and reaches your stomach. You experience in that process, you taste. Then you you have tasted it. After you have tasted it, you are going to define it, define the taste. Based on your experience, you will define it. Now, the taste comes afterwards. The taste comes first, the description comes afterwards. After the act is finished, you have put the dish, put the portion of a dish, through a spoon into your mouth while you are trying to chew it 
you cannot express it because it is considered a bad manner when you are eating and talking. The two actions are going on simultaneously. So you move your palate, you move your tongue, the particular portion of the dish continues to mix with the saliva in your mouth. You are trying to get a taste and trying to recollect what it tastes like. Then it passes through. The process is finished in the mouth. It passes through the fingers and reaches the skin. It is during that process when it is in the melting pot of the mouth, you get a taste of different things that have been put into it. Different dried fruits that have been put into it. Yes, you say yes, there is reason in it. There is something a very tasty nut, but I do not know what it is. Then you say yes, I taste the almonds in it, cashew nuts in it, walnuts in it. And some kind of flavor is a very pleasant flavor, but I cannot figure out what it is. This is what it is going on. And after that, whatever you narrate, whatever you say, is the expression of that experience. The expression comes afterwards, experience comes first. Expression is the outcome of that experience, out of that action. Action comes first, experience comes afterwards. Description comes afterwards. If someone takes that description and tries to go the reverse process, the reverse cannot be possible. You cannot go with the description and get the experience of the taste. Can it be possible? No, it cannot. You have to go into the action first, then the ex you experience, and out of that experience the expression comes, the description comes. The same thing happens in the spirituality. When you have your energy reaches to a particular center, it gives you the experience, then the experience is expressed in the form of words which you find in the books. So if you go through that description and try to reverse the process, you are going to self-hypnotize you and that will become an obstruction. Can you self-hypnotize you with the description of the taste of that particular dish which I have given to you? You will not be able to reverse that process. Through the description you will not get the experience. But if, through the experience, through the taste of that dish, you can go into the description. This is the spirituality. To go into the experience first, then out of the experience, the description comes. But the knowledge goes, you take the, ex the description and through the description you are trying to reach to the experience. You are trying to go into a reverse process, which is not possible. And this is what theory is, this is what the the knowledge is the books that are dead. And a living book is a totally a different thing. It, even when I am explaining to you, explaining to you the every single nuances of it, then it becomes a living book. And it gives you, while I am describing you, when I say that there is almonds in it, there is cash in it, you know the taste, you can identify with the taste of almond, you can identify with the taste of walnut. And when the walnut goes into the process of cooking in a, over the heat, in a liquid milk, it absorbs certain percentage of the milk in it. And then when it is cooked into the milk over the period of time, it gets soft, it gets mellow. It taste becomes totally different. And when you take the raisin from a packet and you put it in your mouth and a raisin that has been boiled in the milk 
passes the milk dish, then it it becomes it sweats because it uh, through the process of osmosis it absorbs the fluid, the contents mixed with sugar and the milk and the all the other aroma that is there put into it that is absorbed by the raisin, it swells and when that raisin goes into your mouth, the taste is totally different. These are the subtle nuances and when you apply this in the field of spirituality, that becomes aliveness. So if you are going into the theoretical knowledge with the description of that particular dish, then you are self-hypnotizing yourself and by and by you will start getting into the rituals. You will create a kind of a dream around you and when there are many people doing the same thing, you tend to fall into the crowd mentality and then you start swaying with the crowd. Once awareness has moved into the, uh, moved in the third eye and it starts functioning, it becomes alive. That is why we do all this as a chakra. Chakra is a circular When the energy goes, if it continues to flow, there is no need. Then it becomes a whirlwind, a spiral. And when something goes into the spiral, it has its limitations. It moves into the circle. And then with the force, it is the, the speed of the circle starts going faster and faster and then when it has gained a momentum, then it suddenly shoots up the space and then again follows the straight path. This is why when you look into the science, the projectiles, you see that uh, it forms a trajectory. And you look at the projectile images, they move in a certain spiral movement and when it has gained a certain amount of movement, certain amount of speed and then it suddenly shoots up and the, uh, the path becomes straight. The, your car, when it is starting, it is gaining momentum. It is moving in spiral, in a trajectory movement and then all of a sudden when it has gained a strength, has gained a certain energy force, it shoots in the forward direction and then it covers the distance. When it is moving as a projectile, as a, in a circle, it does not gain any speed. It does not move forward, it does not cover any distance. So when it reaches to the third eye center or the, that is why it is known as the command center, when the energy reaches to that center, it governs, it controls, it directs all the centers. If your energy is totally a, of a crowd mentality, and there is certain activities going on which are prompted by the lower centers. You are part of the crowd, there is a demonstration. You may engage into the activity which as an individual you may not. As an individual you will not become a watch when a shop is being attacked. But as a part of the crowd, you may pick up a few watches and put in your pocket and you will move out or something else. This is the crowd mentality. Here the command is not coming out of the third eye center. The command says, no, you should not engage into that. That is not the way you live your life. This command comes when the energy is complete, is operating from the command center and it reaches there. Below the command center is the center of your expression, which is the throat center. All the expression comes from that center. Whatever you experience, 
whatever your wherever your energy moves, all the expression of that comes to this the, the fifth center, which is the throat center. I am expressing that through this center only, and there is a complete harmony between the command center and the throat center. Without that, there can be no expression, there can be no words, and the words that will be expressed will not have a transforming effect, which will not create ripples within you. And when this center, and the, uh, the center is directly lighted by the seventh center, the thousand petal center, or the thousand lotus, then it guides your command center, it guides your throat of the expression center, the words flow out of your inner totality, your inner wisdom, and that has the transforming effect that can create ripples within you. When a musician plays the music, he can create the sentiments in such a way that tears begin to flow through your eyes. There is the spark of love can do something in you. And it is said about the Bhaiju Barbara, one of the singers, he could light a lighted, uh, an unlit lamp with the power of the music, with the force. The, the scriptures has mentioned that the fire has been lit with the energy field the master creates the fire. Because that fire is within you, only you have to find the ways and means. The if your words are put in such a way that creates ripples within you, the word sometimes when the talks are going on, and this is the energy field, through tawajju I know, through the silent gestures I can create the same energy field as the words can. The words are flowing out of my innerness. And when the words are flowing out of the innerness, they create a musical harmony because it is flowing out of the musical orchestra. A harmonious blended sound, which has the rhythm, which has the everything in it. And which, and when it enters through the air drums into you, it creates the same it creates the same effect within you. What I want to create within you, that is what it actually goes on. If you can, if you try to write your ex expressions, try to give the description of your feeling on a particular talk, about a particular talk, when you hear, I can tell you what kind of expressions will come out. Something, sometimes the expression becomes indescribable. You are still bound listening to these words. The ordinary words, but the energy that flows, the energy that is flowing from the total orchestra, full tuned orchestra, this is why when the orchestra begins to play, all the musical instruments are tuned first, so that they play one harmony, one note, and when one note is being played, it's not that there, the drum is playing its own tune, and the violin or the sitar is playing its own tune. All are blended into the harmony. So too when the words flow out of the inner harmony or inner orchestra, they have a transforming effect and only they can bring out transformation. Once awareness has moved to the third eye and it starts functioning, uh, becomes alive. That is what Hindus call as chakra. And then it continues to monitor to bring rhythm and if any particular time you lose a note, the other will support your note and that the listeners will not be able to easily discover that there had been 
Alchemist. Alchemist, the particular node has been beaten. A particular node has been beaten. By movement is made that it starts functioning. Then a great revolution happens in your being. Immediately the lower heart bows down to the high. Muladha chapter, the earth center or the, the lowest center which is known as sex center has to be relaxed and relaxed from constipation and from diet. The Muladha has to function at the optimum 100% only then energy will begin to move. This is your base center. If this center is not in harmony or disturbed, then nothing is going to create. Your stove does not have the electric current, or there is a discontinuity or does not have the cooking gas connected to it, then no matter how many matchsticks, how many times you use your gas light and it will not light. The entire fluid of the gas lighter may finish. The entire matchbox may finish but there will be no light because there is no connection. There is no base energy. Energy is needed and energy is always beautiful. If you do not know how to use it, it becomes ugly and it goes on running as the energy has to go higher. Sex is the lowest center of your being. And that is not all. You have seven centers of your being. As the energy moves upward, if you know the key how to release it upward, as it moves from one center to another, you feel many stages of transformation. You feel many states of transformation. When the energy comes to the heart center, you become so full of love, overflow, for the first time that you become an embodiment of love. Sometimes it happens during this, the meditation sessions. You experience that because the energy is made to go on a particular center. All that happens wherever there is a need in you, that's where it will work. And that is why during the meditation sessions there may be different people but the expression of everyone will be different. The description will be different because in a one person the energy works at a center where it is needed. The description will be off when the energy functions at that particular center. In the other it may be different. In the company of someone who does not need, who is already healthy, if he hears about the qualities of the health food products, then it will further strengthen further strengthen his health views, his understanding and will deepen his awareness about that. If I go on speaking about the, the different ways the products, the health can be restored by use of food ingredients, not only your awareness increases, but you get greater insights into it. And then you will start blending those things in that way. The process begins. First it happens, it touches you, it appeals to you. Then the process of functioning begins. When the energy comes to the third eye center, you become conscious. 
or awareness. You become conscious, not that you become conscious. To become conscious and to be consciousness are two different phenomena. You become the embodiment of consciousness, embodiment of awareness. When the energy comes to the last chapter, Sahasra, you blossom, the flowers begin to blossom, a thousand petals, thousand blooms, the season of the spring is alive. Your tree of life has come to its fulfillment. You become a Buddha, but the energy is the same. First the energy was needed for the, the seed to burst open because seed is in the crossed form. The life energy that is stored into the seed burst open the seed. The, first the energy was used to burst open the outer shell of the seed and then with that environment that is provided by the soil, the nourished soil, the sunlight, it is pulsating to experience the sunlight in its all in its glory and splendor. In all its glory and splendor. Then it pulsates to come from the womb of the earth. It pulsates, you see it is pulsating now. First it was pulsating to emerge out of its shell. Now it is emerging out of, to come out of the womb of the earth. And when it gets the first glimpse of the sunlight, the air, the atmosphere, it is totally a different phenomenon. Be a seed. Experience what happens to the seed. There is tremendous joy in a nascent seedling when it grows. A very soft, very tender, full of energy. That is why we use the greens. There is a new phenomenon is going on in the field of health when we use different green seedlings, wheat, barley, and many other greens and a juice is made out of that and that is considered as a life force, a very nutritious for the body. And when these are preserved, dehydrated, it becomes in the powder form and that is used to bring nourishment to the body. This is the seedling, the energy that has been used to burst the outer shell. Now it has burst out of the womb of the earth. It has become a seedling, pulsating with the energy life forms. Then it, the process continues. And the same energy that was first used in bursting the outer shell of the sea. Then at the second stage it is used to come out of that womb. Then it is used continuously in the growth. When it reaches to a certain amount of maturity, it brings flowers, the spring of flowers. Now you look at it, seedling was very important at a particular time. It was being used for nourishment, but you do not take the grown tree which is now blossoming. The flowers 
for the health and nutrition. Now the flowers have come, the spring has come, your enjoyment becomes totally different. Then the fruits come in, the cup, the crop is harvested, a joy and beauty is of a different type. This is how the process of the cycle spiritual century grows on. The same energy is moving through the different stages. The expression, the celebration is different. And when it reaches finally the same leaves which were once a source of nourishment, it, it is now turned gold. Time has come to fall. When it falls, it does not go waste. It goes into a second process. It continues to nourish and nurture the tree. First it was nourishing and nurturing the outer atmosphere and the outer. Now it nourishes the tree. The process changes. The season of the spring has arrived. Your tree of life has come to a fulfillment. You become a Buddha. But the energy is safe. Therefore do not condemn or suppress. When someone is operating a particular center, the existential energy has is to be transformed. Be more understanding, alert. Only then you will be able to enter the totality. Each chakra has its own color. So when you concentrate on a certain chakra, you will have certain colors in your dreams and wishes. As you move upward, the color changes. In fact, in yoga psychology, a person's dreams, fantasies and visions can indicate where the energy is exactly. Sometimes you are deluded by the body. And somehow if you manage to go beyond the body, you are deluded by the mind, which is more of a deluder than anything else. The first three chakras belong to the body, the earth center, the water center and the fire center. They belong to the body. And the next three centers, next three centers, the heart center, the Throat center, the center of expression. Heart center is the center of emotions. And it has two parts, the lower emotions and the higher emotions. Then the throat center, the center of expression. Then the center of command, the third eye center. These centers belong to the mind. And seventh center, which is the thousand petal, or known as crown chakra, is beyond both body and mind. Ordinarily, people who indulge remain in the first three lower centers. And when you play the drum instruments, all these lower three centers are activated. This is why when you hear the jazz music, you hear the drums, it Activate those centers and people enter into those kind of dance forms that you see when the lower centers are affected. When you see the they they, they are they hang around ordinary people who indulge remain in the first three lower chakras, they hang around there. The first three centers are Muladha, the earth center, Swadishna, the water center and Manipur, the fire center or the, uh, the solar plexus. This is known as in Japanese as Haraki. That is the center where the life force is stays. And if you want to commit suicide, so those who have intentions among you specifically, so they can use just using a small pointed thing through your solar plexus and the light force disappears. That is why when you laugh it is your solar plexus, solar cell and the heart the stomach tends to 
get affected or you say that my stomach is hurting don't be me laugh and go and when you are emotionally disturbed it is your the digestion becomes disturbed these are the earth bound centers the first three centers they are earth the chakras they are attracted by the gravitational force they are pulled downwards that's why these energies pull you downwards only the next three chakras are anha chakra the heart center the lower and the higher emotions vishuddha throat center the center of expression anjana chakra or the third eye center or the center of the center of command are sky bound gravitational force does not affect them they are under another law that is called levitation or the grace they are pulled upwards these three consist of mind the body is pulled downwards mind is pulled upwards but you are neither body nor the mind you are the seven which is neither body nor the mind so the people who indulge in life those who indulge in life live in the first three chakras and people who repress the first three centers start living in the next three chakras but they create a dream world a center around which one's life has revolved is the center from where he will depart from this life the most of the time from where you have come what kind of life force what kind of life is life life of indulgence life of dream or life of transcendent beyond you that will determine from the center the center from where your life force will be found therefore a yogi can leave from the third eye center or the command center the agya chakra agya means command the third eye center and lover leaves from the heart center the life energy of an enlightened one would leave from the thousand petal or the seventh chakra or the crown center his skull his skull will break open as he departs from that center and more or less there is a particular we see that a, a whole type of situation is seen when you look at the skull of the enlightened ones you will find a big hole in that when you look at it when you go to the intipet there are certain the bodies are embalmed and when you look at their skull you will find there is a hole in at that center where the light moves, moves out this is the softest center in your skull which is the thousand petal center when the energy move upward we become more and more silent silence is the by step by product of the energy moving upward and tension is the by product of the energy moving downward tension and stress is the gross misuse of your creative intelligence you will be more and more in anxiety full of anger and energy these are the indications when anger is coming into you it is that your energy is moving down same time becoming conscious of it changes the direction of your energy and your anger becomes transforms into non anger which is love on the contrary you will be more and more silent quiet calm and cool as energy moves upward or inwards and these words downward and upward are synonyms and inward and upward are also synonyms 
And when you have become silent, that energy is moving like a flood. It is passing through all the chakras and all the centers. And when it passes through all the chakras, it cleans them, purifies them, and makes them dynamic, alive, and the flood goes upward, upward to the last chakra. You are becoming a harmonious blend, a tuned orchestra of harmonies. Sex is the first chakra, the first center, the lowest. Man exists at the lowest. That is why we know life only at its minimum. And when the energy flows upward and reaches to the last center, to Sahasra, energy is at its maximum. Life is at, at its maximum. Then you feel as if the whole cosmos has become silent. Not even a single sound is there. Everything becomes absolutely silent when the energy comes to the last chakra. You know the first chakra? It will be easy to understand through that. When the energy comes to the sex center, you become absolutely tense. The whole body is feverish. Your energy cell is in a fever. Your temperature goes high. Blood pressure moves up. And breathing becomes haphazard. Your whole body is in a temporary delirium at the lowest. And at the last, Chakra, the situation is totally different. The whole body becomes so cool, so silent, as if it has disappeared. You cannot feel it. You have become bodiless. And when you are silent, the whole existence flows within your silence. It is silent because the existence is nothing but a mirror. It reflects or mirrors you. In thousands and thousands of mirrors, it reflects you. When you are silent, the whole existence has become silent. There are seven chakras. The anhat is the heart center, just in the middle. Three chakras below that and three above. The three below are the earth center, the water center and the fire center. Those three belong to an extrovert personality. In the West, the majority lives through those three chakras. And now in the East also, the majority is moving towards the Western attitude of life. These three chakras are very easily available. They have a certain given function and you need not go much on them. Without them, life becomes impossible. They are survival measures to mature, to, so nature has not given you a choice between them. From the moment you are born, those three chakras start functioning. They go on functioning until you die. The whole life is covered by those three chakras and the extrovert person never comes to know that there is nothing higher than these. Sex, money, power, prestige, respectability, name, and fame all belong to these three chapters. At the center, at the center of all those chapters is sex. People seek money in order to seek sex. People seek fame and power and prestige in order to seek sex. Sex remains the center of the lower three chapters. Sex remains the center of the extrovert personality. His whole mind revolves around sex. Ever under the heart, there are three chakras. We should the center of expression, the fourth center, the anjana chakra between the two eyes and the third eye center. And Sahasra is the last center. It is the center of Samadhi, the ultimate and full. Between these two is the heart center. Between the introvert and the extrovert is the heart that functions as the door. Heart is the bridge. Just as sex is the center of extrovert mind, prayer or meditation is the center of introvert mind. It is the door of the introvert mind. 
but to call it a prayer is more relevant. Between these two, when a person is just in the middle, on the fourth chapter, at the door, love is principle, love is between sex and prayer. When sex is somewhat purified, it becomes love. When love is also purified, it becomes prayer. So it is the same energy, the sexual or existential biology that goes into higher formations and becomes love first, then it becomes prayer. In the East, people have tried to live an introvert life. They have tried to live above the heart. But both are not sight. The Western extrovert mind and the Eastern introvert mind are both love sight. To become a total man, one needs the functioning of all the seven centers. How can you have the, the lower three steps of your ladder not functioning and they are missing? You cannot climb. In order to climb these steps, if something is going on, or on your steps that is leading to upstairs. How can you climb upstairs? It is said that the room is blocked. You have to take alternate rooms to climb upstairs, but in case of spirituality, there is no alternate rooms. You have to use the same ladder, the same ladder to go up and the same ladder to go down. And when you become accustomed to going up and up and down, then you can use any particular center at any particular time. You can enter into your love making as meditatively as possible. When, then your love making will become meditation. Your talking to someone will become meditation. It will become an expression of a thousand petal centers. It is the light of the sasra, the light of the crown center will manifest through the sex center and it will transform your love making. It will transform your communion with the uh, with your employees, with your subordinates, with your colleagues in the office. The entire life structure, life pattern begins to change. To become a total man, one needs the functioning of all the centers. It is not a question of choice. In that field, you have no choice. You have to go through all of these. You cannot overlook one for the other. In that case, you will, your development will be lopsided. Something will be missing in you. You will not have the totality. This is why the Master said that in order to continue through the spiritual life, you have to go through all the experience of all the emotion. You must know what anger is like. If someone asks me, and I have not, not known anything, if I have not known anything about sex, if I have not known anything about male-female relation, how can I relate to it? In order to do that, I have to have the experience of all that. This is what had happened to Shankar. When the, he was going, he had engaged into an argument with a Vedanta, a, a philosopher known as Mandan Mishra, and he has uh, made he has consented to have Mandan's wife to be the judge. And Mandan, Shankar defeated Mandan in his arguments at that level, at the level of the mind. But Shankar was not, he was a salivate, he was a monk, he did not have the experience of sex. So it was almost ready to be declared that Mandan has defeated. But then his wife, the judge, said, Mandan is not defeated because Mandan is married and the wife is considered half according to the Eastern philosophy. Wife is half of your spiritual treasure. But we have only interpreted it as far as the alimony is concerned, as far as the money and the resources is concerned. The moment the problem comes in, the property, the wealth, the bank balances, has to be divided because wife is part of you. Not the spiritual wealth, not that awareness. So Mandal's wife said, the, I am still undefeated. And I will ask, now Mandal is defeated, but I am his partner, I am his life force. 
and unless you defeat me in Arjuna, you have not defeated Manda. And then she asks me question about the sex life and Shankar had no experience. So he has to go through the, a particular ritual, a particular way of going into the past lives. Shankar has already assumed the life of a monk. He has a, 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 the, the secluded, he has become a recluse, a monk. So he could not follow the way of Buddha. Otherwise he would have gone into the Jati Sangha, the process that Buddha has used in order to go into your past life and past experiences. This is the process which in the Western psychology is used. But the Western psychology takes you only up to the age of five. Abraham Maslow's technique of regression. I will speak on these sometimes in later talks whenever the opportunity comes. But for the time being, Shankar has to use a different methodology and to enter into the he, uh, ambition that a particular king was dying. So he entered into his soul and he disembodied himself and then entered into the soul, uh, the body of that king who was dying. And for six months he stayed there, experienced the life, the sex, the force, and then he came out of that body after the period of six months of meditative flights, and then he came and he answered the questions of only then when he has gone through that meditative process, meditatively into the process of sex, that he was able to go beyond that and explain and express. This is what had happened to St. Mark Simon who spoke on sex. The Kama Sutra, the Sutras, the principles of sex. In one way, the sex dimensions beyond the known, the recent book, is an embodiment of that. The dimensions which are beyond the known have been expressed in but they have been expressed only as an individual process, not as a relationship between male and female. The outer dimension, this is the inner, and uh, the merger of anima and animus. How your male energy and female energy merges into one another and you experience inner obviously within you. And unless that happens, you are not ready to enter into the outer dimension of the relationship of the male female, which will be explained in this, the next work on marriage, which is the orgasm of the outer male and female. Sex, the first stage is the inner union of inner orgasm between your animal animals, between your inner man and the inner woman. And marriage is the relationship between, is the harmony, is the blend, or is between your outer man and outer woman. The two are interrelated to one another. This is why marriage and sex goes together. If meditativeness and lovingness is not there, it is of no use. So this is it for this morning's talk. When you read this chapter that begins from page 127 to 137 of Wisdom from the Science of Eternity, it gives you the pointers. It explains to you, but what I spoke to you is much more than that. It is between the lines which a man of awareness can be. Although I have written, but in writing all the subtle nuances cannot be put. But this is why the after maybe a year and so when the expression will be finished.
and as soon as I get the opportunity and the opportunity, these books will be presented as audio books and the process has already begun. I have started through these meditation sessions creating the audio books and as you will notice that each talk is being made available. There is a connection between the written that the book is in your head and that which cannot be written that is between the lines that will be presented musically as the, the sound of the orchestra of the being into the form of audio books, into the form of these meditation sessions. Only this much for this morning. Take care and do not listen. So this is it for this morning. What else is there for me to see? Enough has flown. It is only for you to assimilate it. Allow it to absorb into your being. The unknown has spoken. The unknown and unknown who has spoken on these centers, subjects. This is aspect. That is. Aspect.